Okay, so. Um, yeah, there are extensions, whatever. I couldn't figure it out. Anyways, I'll just leave it like this. I'll make you suffer. Um, so plaintiff, thick with three C's, Boy Productions, Inc. Versus Kyle Swindellas, a.k.a. Uniqueness, defendant. I do not know who this guy is. Thick Boy Productions. Um, he has a name, actually. Let me find this real quick before I look like a fool. Brendan Schwab. Mr. Schwab was a is a podcaster apparently he's like a really really famous podcaster he's friends with joe rogan he was in um combat sports or something did podcasts about that and he has because he is a uh he's an awful stand-up comedian too apparently he's a mixed martial artist he does a lot of stuff he's a he's a man of a jack of all trades uh this is a copyright dispute that he lost um what had happened is is that he has a mentally handicapped fanboy um, and I'll play, actually, you know what? Schwab. Let me go through, and I'm going to play just a, an audio recording of him. I want, to, I want you to have an idea of what this guy sounds like. There's a video. Oh, here it is. No, it's on the previous page. Sorry, I, I didn't want to play this. I didn't cue this up because it's like a long form video. Of this guy going over um, the lawsuit, but I, I, you need to hear his voice to understand who he is. This is Unique Productions. This is the defendant in this this lawsuit. He has a Goku avatar on on YouTube. He's just some random guy with a Goku avatar that makes fun of Brendan Schwab. This is what he sounds like. Circumstances. The court concludes that Mr. Schwab. Use of the copyrighted material is fair. Three of the actually sorry, that's at two X. Let me play it at one X. The four statutory factors weigh in Mr. Swindell's favor. And Mr. Swindell's use of the copyrighted material serves a public benefit. See, I'm doing the public a benefit by trashing Brendan Job. It's now officially in, codified in law. So he's like a mushmouth um like anti fan uh who has this really shitty microphone set up but you know he does it old fashioned style he boots up his recorder he sits down with his shitty microphone he lists out uh, you know his review over the le recent Brandon Schwab drama uh he goes over footage of like him at parties where he's handing out phone numbers to women despite being a married man he's basically this guy's critic and uh Brendan Schwab got upset at this guy and thought uh, he called it defamation, even though it's a copyright lawsuit. And he says, if you're the type of guy that's that's stalking me and you're you're um, trying to involve yourself in my personal life, I won't stand for that. I'm not going to allow you to make videos talking about if I'm handing out my number to other women, I'm going to go after you hard. And I have the money and I have the big, scary lawyers to make this happen. So we hired a proper law firm and sent this guy a copyright complaint on uh, on YouTube. And the uh, Kyle Swindellas, uh, or Unique, I'll just call him Unique, uh, decided to counter and say these are fair use. Um, because all I'm doing is I'm providing commentary over things that really aren't creative works to begin with. Because, for instance, um, a purely creative work like a movie or a book or a um, a song, those are those are kind of different than commentary in themselves. What I do, where I talk over clips, is a different type of of copyright um, than something that's a purely creative work. So, my clips have significantly less copyright protection than something like a, a book would or a movie would. Because it's not a, it, it's it's it sounds like I'm self-deprecating, but it's not a creative work. Um, it's it's a it's a commentary. It's a it's a discussion. It's a um, just a guy talking as opposed to something that requires sitting down and investing a considerable amount of time and maybe money to produce a completed work. It's just a guy with OBS, right? 
and ultimately that's what they found about thick boy productions is that brendan schwab's podcast or whatever is the same as as mine he's showing clips he's showing articles he's talking giving his opinions and therefore he's entering into a public discussion he's not creating a creative creative work um and that's again that's not like a, a diminutive thing where i'm saying oh he his podcast isn't even a creative work the judge says that he's uncreative like no it's just that it's not a uh, a work in that uh, it's just a different kind of work um and that that is a not in his favor in a copyright dispute because when um unique takes his clips and comments on his clips well he's just doing the same thing to him right so you can't really complain too much about it uh the from what i understand the real fuck up with this case is that um, when they took this to, to court, because he's a pro se plaintiff, he didn't even have an LLC, right? He he was just he just went by the name Uniqueness. He didn't have an LLC for it. His videos are just. I assume that if he collects money off of it, it just goes to his uh, social security number and instead of a, like an EID for a company. However, this has a very interesting side effect. Here's a fun fact about the legal system. Everyone knows that you can be a pro se plaintiff or a defendant. Well, you can't be a pro se defendant or plaintiff representing your LLC. Even if your LLC is 100% you, the way that it works is that in, companies have a, a type of personhood. So because your company is a different person than you, you can't be a pro se plaintiff representing another person, even if it's a company, right? Um, you have to have a law degree. You have to be licensed to do that in the jurisdiction too. So... Um, by not having a company, when he was sued, um, he could represent himself. Now, ordinarily, uh, there's an expression, a uh, a man who represents himself has a fool for a client, right? That's well known. So it would be a very bad idea to try and represent yourself, especially when you're being sued for big money for, for copyright infringement. That's a no joke. That's a serious problem. Enter the ghost lawyer. Now it is illegal to um, represent somebody. Um, from what I actually, let me ask Harden this too, because I'm I'm curious. I want to be right. I'm just gonna. This is gonna be my another segment. I'm just gonna ask him questions midstream. Is it illegal for a lawyer to send filings for a pro se litigant to file without the lawyer being on the docket? i.e. a like a ghost writer a ghost lawyer we will get an answer to this i believe that it is illegal to do this i think that if you represent somebody you actually have to to file that you represent because if you don't for instance if you don't have jurisdiction if you're not licensed to practice law in rhode island where this is taking place in the federal district of rhode island nonetheless um then you can't you can't do it so there's a lot of questions involved in that. And I'm pretty sure that that is illegal to allow a pro se um, litigant to file f your your filings for you. Um, but he did, <laughs> is the thing. He um, This guy who you listen to and who doesn't really sound like a lawyer or someone who has a law degree, uh, suddenly started filing very correct filings, now, which is not easy to do. I, the, I may know another pro se litigant um, who has been asked to file certain things by a certain time and has failed to do so to date um, and may have three days left to, to file. Actually, it may have less than one day less to file at this point. Um, but he started responding correctly and responding in a way that made the litigation much more complicated than it would have been with just a regular pro se litigant. So the attempt to scare him into settling failed and he refused to settle later because his lawyers started offering like one dollar settlements with him um and he refused so he fought with his ghost lawyer in tow and won um the federal court of rhode island held that the uses were fair that the um that brendan schwab's uh podcast did not constitute a creative work and that it was of a public interest to allow Unique or Kyle Swindellas to comment on his podcast and make fun of it and poke fun at the fact that he was handing out his number at parties and stuff. So he lost. 
uh, against a pro se litigant and his ghost lawyer. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I would do want to show you this clip because after he decided to file this and lose, um, he then went out to show what a tough guy what he was by taking his truck out to the desert to do some donuts. So hey, he's lost all that money. The videos went up. Uniqueness is now going to get a lot more followers because uh, he went through the court and won and people are going to talk about this. Anytime a copyright, by the way, anytime a copyright uh, case goes all the way up to a federal court and reaches a conclusion because lawsuits are expensive. So most times when there's a copyright dispute, it will be settled before it goes, goes to the judge and the judge reaches a determination. But anytime a copyright case is settled, it adds a little bit more to case law for copyright. And because copyright is such a huge part of society, Anytime you win something like this, it's a good thing. Anytime a litigant prevails on fair use, that is a great thing. Especially, it's a—I mean, it's in the federal court of Rhode Island, but um, but it's but it helps. You know, it, it can be referenced in other districts. So it, this is a—I mean, it's a good thing. He won, and that's a—it's awesome. Uh, so good for him. So the dude decided after after losing that he was going to go blow off some steam. Because he just accidentally, in his attempt to silence this guy, this random Spurg, he accidentally set case law, which is beneficial to all people using fair use. Um, so he decided he was going to do some donuts out in the desert to show what a big guy he was. Starting emergency call to the SOS service provided by the manufacturer. To cancel, press the SOS or cancel button. Starting SOS call. SOS call not successful. SOS system will continue to retry. Cool. Um, the whole the whole like robot voice like saying you have been in a car crash. It reminds me of this. I actually downloaded this because I was going to clip it, but I didn't. Uh, here, does this play? Experiencing a car accident. The hell I am. You <laughs> I don't know why, just the robot voice. You are in a car accident. We're gonna call the police. Um and then and then the car and then it fails. They can't call the police. Uh, we tried our best. You're just gonna bleed out in the desert, I guess. <laughs> it sucks to suck. Um cool. By the way, Harden replied. He says this is controversial. And that uh, some courts do not allow it, and some courts require that you disclose it, and some courts don't have a precedent. So you can ghost, you can ghost lawyer. Surprising chat, surprising. Why did he upload that video? He might have um, live streamed it. I'm not sure. Maybe he uploaded it to show what a cool guy he was. Yeah, man, I've been in a car accident, and I survived, man. I'm like, I'm like a killer on the inside, bro. You know how tough guys are. Thanks so for watching the script. This is Willow. Remember to like and subscribe.